Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, in the previous video we finished off the original game. Uh, we finished Rise from the Ashes, which means we get to start Justice for All in this video. Uh, so let's get going and I hope you enjoy. Uh, episode 1, The Lost Turnabout. It's got a nice picture of Phoenix there and a certain cutie pie in the background there, which who, whom we shall be meeting shortly. Let's go. <sighs> How did I get into this mess? That's far enough. You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. Huh? But I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence. You are no longer worthy of your title. <laughs> September 8, 9.08 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Yeah, that was a dream sequence. It's... This game starts out weird. What a nightmare. And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Bip! Huh. Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. Finally found it. Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. Hmm, maybe I should have given him a different voice. Anyway, that was the murderer. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> They show you who it is in the beginning of the case again, just like in the first game. Ouch, my head, it's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? Good morning. Back. Uh, good morning? What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Roger that. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? A cab. I thought maybe I had done something wrong. No, you did nothing wrong, A cab. What are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. A cab. <laughs> what? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix, right? Life in my hands? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. Not, not, not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost and all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. Making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? I can't believe this. 
No, it's just... Well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes? I'm... I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? So this is how they handle doing another tutorial case. They just gave Phoenix amnesia, so that they, people have to explain to him how the court works. Let's see, I must have amnesia. Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ugh, someone please. Tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? September 8, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? Um, what if I said no? Would that be alright? Of course it wouldn't. And why bother asking to begin with? <laughs> Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. A cab. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I have. Mr. Bain, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. Also, a cab. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case... Prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay. And who are you again? The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoot, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant... She works under me, so, you know... You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters. Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. Get it? Dustin Prince? He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. The details listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah yes, this autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? Because you have amnesia, Phoenix. <laughs> See, everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. 
Very well. The court accepted into evidence. Crime photo 1 added to the court record. Now then, I recall yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes? I guess? Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Uh, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually... Um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you through the I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yep. Info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by pressing the R button. Yep. <laughs> The R button, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Yeah, you should totally stop being a cop, Maggie. You're, you're too pure to be a cop. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. S sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can find. What was it again? The R button? Alright, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? It's this, it's the pair of glasses. Glasses, found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed the, his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir and held on to them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing... <sighs> yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. Are you sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. Ugh. <laughs> Your Honor, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Witness testimony. Decisive evidence. Notice the music is different? Yeah, this game has different music. I think I liked it better in the first game, but it's okay. There's something even more incriminating in the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his day, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. This piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Why, this is... Yes, I can see her name is clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy! I'm not guilty, sir! Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it! I'm counting on you! Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What?! This isn't like you at all! Normally this is the part where you get in the witness's faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does sort of like, look like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. 
Mr. Wright, cross examination, please. Y yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be all right. Okay, so the problem here is that the name written on the ground is not the defendant's name, because the defendant's name is M-A-G-G-E-Y, Maggie. Um, this does raise certain questions, because nobody is saying how they're spelling the name, which is weird. Um, also, in this game, and in the following game, you can actually present profiles as evidence, as well as presenting actual, like, evidence as evidence, which is a new feature, it's kind of cool. Um, it doesn't come up that much, but, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> What is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. What a rush. Detective Gumshoe. Y you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to pull through with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's, uh, name is, uh, Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It sounds right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! See, this, this is the weird thing. Nobody is, is spelling what they're saying. It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. Like, and, and it is pronounced exactly the same way. It is part of the case that Maggie's name is pronounced exactly the same way as it would be if her name was spelt the other way. So, I don't understand how they're doing this. <laughs> What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. <laughs> how, did, how did they do it? <laughs> this is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, but, but. But maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. Objection! May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover? If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to not have known her name. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Yes, I am quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dustin and Maggie. Officer Prince and Officer Bird have been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, so... Maggie, I mean, Officer Bird had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had bought over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross examine the witness, Mr. Wright. Dustin and Maggie cross examination. Okay, so what the present is is actually quite important. So, uh, we're gonna try to press and find out what it is. Over two months ago? Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? 
She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Uh, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see, a baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. A baseball glove, hmm. Just now I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? No, nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? The glove was custom made? Yep, that's what I said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to the case. Yes, it would seem that there is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to this case? Of course it's relevant. I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes, bluffing to the max. Now this is the Mr. Wright I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great! Hmm, pressing people. Feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Very well. If you are that convinced, let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? How are you going show the glove to the court? Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it, sir. It's, uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Baseball glove added to the court record. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had to special order it? Yup, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. Writing on the ground. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Hmm. Yes, perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, this one's pretty simple. Uh, the glove we just got? If you take a look at the shape of it, you can see that this glove is intended to be worn on the right hand. Which means that this glove is for a left-handed person, because that's how baseball gloves work. Which means that Dustin Prince is left-handed, or, you know, was left-handed. Which means the fact that he used his right hand doesn't make sense. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um, never really thought about it, but, uh... It's really yellow, and that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom-made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-handers glove for sale, have you? Well, um, no. So, detective. Which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that it was his... Wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! <laughs> this is... that is... I mean, I... object! Overruled. 
Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. I don't think that's strictly true, but... Like, a left-handed person probably wouldn't write a message with that right hand. <laughs> Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Like, because it's also been misspelled, the, the two pieces of evidence add up. <laughs> order, order. When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible this name was written by the victim himself. It's possible. I, I, I could I could scroll something out with my left hand if I wanted to. I'm I'm right-handed. Like I could I could. Uh, it's just not probable because. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> then that means Maggie is. No, oh, it's not possible, Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor. The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! Alright, you did it, Mr. Wright. Whew, I feel like I can breathe again. It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? <laughs> well, thank you, sir. See? You got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. No, not yet. I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? And what did this witness... witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Order, order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. Hmm, I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. To be continued. So yeah, um, the trial, the tutorial case in this game actually has two chapters. Pretty exciting. Uh, I guess we use a separate slot. I don't really need to keep that other save, but you know, we might as well do it like this. Okay, um, so that's the end of, of that segment. Um, next time we'll finish off the Lost Turn about it. It is a short case, um, so it doesn't go for too long, but that's it for now. Um, in any case, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and next time we'll finish off the Lost Turn about. Yay! <laughs> And then we'll move on to the case after that, I guess. <laughs> Bye!